Welcome back to EPV TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. We are looking at a micro four thirds lens today. This is the Leica DG Vario Sumolux 25 to 50 1.7. This is a sister lens to the 10 to 25 lens. And this really does now give you an interesting and versatile pair of lenses for photography as well as videography where you need nice, bright, fast aperture zooms. Now where the 10 to 25 would give us a really nice ultra wide to normal kind of lens, this is going to be in full frame terms more like a 50 to 100 millimeter zoom. So think of it as really kind of your portrait ranges. And with that aperture of f1.7, that gives us a full frame depth of field equivalent of what you'd expect out of a 3.4 zoom lens. So yeah, maybe not quite as shallow depth of field as a 2.8 zoom, but pretty much right in the sweet spot where I would shoot most of my portraits. So first off, I want to say I appreciate all the well wishes about my foot. It is getting better uh, a little bit slowly though, so I'm still going to be sitting quite a bit today. I apologize for that. But let's get into the handling on this lens. Now, first off, when I say that this is a sister lens to the 10 to 25, I mean it. I mean, physically, it's very similar. What Leica and Panasonic have done here is designed a lens that lines up exactly with the 10 to 25 as far as where the zoom ring goes, where the manual focus and clutch goes, and where the aperture ring goes. So if you have this set up in a focusing rig, you're not going to need to modify anything as you go back from one lens to another. Everything should line up perfectly. It is a chunky lens, absolutely, as to be expected with that fast aperture, but very solidly built, weather sealed, just like the 10 to 25 was, 77 millimeter filter thread. And let's talk about the actual rings that we have here. I mean, build quality on this lens is excellent. They're all metal knurled rings. The aperture ring is totally stepless. So for video users, you're gonna like that smooth, quiet control. There isn't an option to put it into clicks. So if you wanna do that, or if you want third stop increments or something, then you're gonna to click to the A setting and you're gonna use the command dial on the camera itself. That's what I'm doing today. Manual focus is nice and smooth, and of course it does have that pull down clutch, which we really like. It gives you distance indicators, and again, it's really good for video work. And then again, smooth zoom ring. I mean, everything on this is built solidly. Let's talk about autofocus. What we normally like to do is actually show you by hooking up a Ninja to the camera and showing you the focus speed. But Panasonic's and Ninja's actually slows down the autofocusing performance. So I'll just tell you my experience with it. It is very fast, silent focusing motor, nice and quiet. I mean, a lens like this where you have fairly shallow depth of field and you might be shooting street photography and stuff, you'll have no issues keeping up with the action. So Jordan has cruelly requested that I hobble through a walk and talk. So. Uh, you can leave all your comments below to Jordan about that. So let's do a short one. Let's talk about LOCA, longitudinal chromatic aberration, where you get those color fringes and out of focus areas, foreground and background. It's something that's fairly difficult to fix in post, but luckily the 25 to 50 has a little bit, but it's pretty average. It's pretty manageable, nothing that I'd really worry about. Now, as far as lateral chromatic aberration goes, just color fringing around high contrast areas, again, not an issue, and that is easy to correct in post. Everybody, it's Jordan here. I'm gonna take over for a little bit, give Chris a bit of a break. And I think that makes perfect sense because just like the 10 to 25 millimeter, I think that the 25 to 50 will be primarily used as a video lens. And I absolutely love the 10 to 25. It's one of my favorite video lenses ever, but there are some times I felt a little restricted where I want more of a portrait focal length, or especially if I'm doing product shots, the 10 to 25 has really nice close-up capability, but the working distance is very short. You kind of have to be right on top of it. And a lot of the time, the shadow from my lens would be in the shot. I like that we get very close magnification at 50 millimeters on this lens, but that does get you a little bit more working distance. It's gonna be great for when I'm doing product shots. One nice thing with this lens is Panasonic has made sure that not only physically is it almost identical to the 10 to 25, but also in terms of the picture quality, when we shoot both the 10 to 25 and the 25 to 50 at 25 millimeters, you can see color and contrast is almost identical between the two of them. So it's gonna be really easy to match shots if you're using both lenses at the same time. When a lens is designed for video work, there's a few things that I take very seriously. One of them is breathing, where if you focus the lens from macro to infinity on a lot of lenses, you'll actually see the focal length change. Uh, breathing is extremely well controlled on this lens, uh, almost invisible at both 25 and 50 millimeters. So if you're pulling focus, it's gonna look really lovely. 
One thing a lot of video shooters ask about is, is this lens parfocal? And what that means is, if you zoom the lens, do you or the camera need to refocus or does it maintain its focus distance? Uh, we don't test it a lot because there tends to be a lot of sample variation, even within the same type of lens. Some will be more parfocal than others. In the case of this though, I think it's important to test and unfortunately this lens is not at all parfocal. You can see right here, focusing on the wide end and then zooming into the telephoto, it completely loses its focus. So you will have to refocus this lens whenever you zoom it. Now we don't need a lens to be incredibly sharp for 4K video, but don't forget uh, some photographers might be using these on micro four thirds bodies for stills. And there's a GH6 coming up with 5.7K recording quite soon here. So I was eager to test the sharpness of this lens. And you can see at 25 millimeters in the center, very, very sharp stopping down doesn't really improve the sharpness at all. Zooming into 50 millimeters and looking at the center, we're finding the exact same thing. Extremely sharp, even wide open. Stopping down, we don't see much of an improvement in sharpness. However, when we look at the extreme corners, there we do see some improvements from stopping down. You can see at 25 millimeters, those corners do improve a bit when you stop down, but especially at the long end at 50 millimeters, looking at those extreme corners, they sharpen up quite a bit when you stop the lens down. Now bear in mind that's looking at the extreme corners in a four by three aspect ratio. Most of the time when you're shooting video, it'll be at 16 by nine. So any of those deficiencies in the corners won't even be visible in the image. Bokeh on this lens is quite nice and you can get some real separation, especially if you're shooting wide open at closer focal distances. Now I will say if you've got specular highlights in the shot, there you will find they can be filled with quite a bit of onion rings. It can be a little bit distracting. So just be aware if you're gonna put a bunch of Christmas lights in the back of your shot. So at the end of the day, I really see the 25 to 50 millimeter as an extension of everything that I love about the 10 to 25. You've got that extremely responsive manual focus ring that's breathing corrected, got a very fast focus motor in this. Actually, it's a linear motor, so a little bit faster than a stepping motor in the 10 to 25 millimeter lens. And yes, it's a very expensive option, but most video centric lenses tend to be quite pricey because they're targeting a bit more niche audience. But even if you're a photographer looking for a native zoom that's really, really fast in that kind of portrait range, well, this is kind of the only game in town. So does it justify the price? That really depends on the type of work and photography that you do. But I think a lot of video shooters are gonna be absolutely thrilled to see this lens as an option. Micro Four Thirds is again proving that it is very viable for professional work. Hopefully this episode helped you decide if the 25 to 50 millimeter lens is gonna be the right one for you. But if you wanna look a little closer, don't forget to go to dpreview.com. We've got a full sample gallery there where you can download the raw files, pixel peep until your heart's content. And don't forget if you appreciate the work that we put into these episodes, be sure to subscribe so you can see more DP Review TV very soon.